Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Mantalk.ke. This, as I always say, is my favourite part of the season because we have our phones and we have your questions that we're going to ask. The thing I like about it is it can be, it can go anywhere. This is literally your episode that you curate, we just answer. Now, as you can see, the green, the chairs, the mics, the tables, the beautiful bottles here. We're back at our home, Kofisi. We're here at the Keystone Park branch. It's a uh, Keystone Park is on Riverside Drive, a really, really central location, beautiful staff, beautiful rooms, and just very nice equipment for presenting and free coffee. So um, all the details are going to be down below with the rates and everything. If you want to become a member of Kofisi, you will definitely not regret it. So thank you for Kofisi for sponsoring this season. We really appreciate it. We love working with you guys. Now, oh, I can see you scrolling through the questions. And I can see a vein starting to form on the side of your head. <laughs> <laughs> just to, to start, start uh, pulsing. How, yeah, are you right? um, how are you guys? How are you guys doing? <laughs> Welcome to uh, Mantalk.ke. It's another fantastic episode, as uh, Mr. Eli has said. Yes, yes, um, yes. This is the Q&A episode, which is... Episode six. The fun one. The fun one. The, the fun one. Yeah. The, the one when we, I think we, we get to kind of interact with our fans and, and mm. see their perspective. Because mm. mm. a lot of the, I feel like the more we've grown... Mm. the higher the quality of our questions and mm. the higher the the higher the audience has demanded from us whenever we answer these questions i challenge that some of the questions are tragic so i'll be honest some of them, uh, some yeah, of them. You, you'll challenge that, some of, since, since season one are you single the same question i mean and they, she's been asking it yes same uh, person please see below <laughs> the link to season six <laughs> five four three two and one uh, uh, <laughs> no, no i'm joking yeah I love but the yeah I love but then the questions are mad yeah, um but yeah. today i think there's room for some scandal yeah yeah um there's room for some fun yeah and uh, will you uh, kick off or shall I? Uh, you can actually kick off because what we do, by the way, we never actually look at them until we sit down here. Like until five minutes before rolling, we take screenshots and then we go. So it's off the bat. We don't want to premeditate the answers. So uh, I like that though. I like that. I like the pressure. So mm, you, can, you can kick off, buddy. Mm, you can kick off. I have... Um, I have Str- I, I strap have, in. I have, um, I have one. Tell me. <clears throat> have you gone through, Mr. Manda, mm-hmm. a quarter life crisis? Quarter life would uh, be twenty five. Yes. Was there a crisis when I hit the age of twenty five? All those years ago, Oscar. Uh, yes, all, all those years. All those ago. years ago. Ah. When you decided to shift countries. Yes, so. yes, ah. yes. <laughs> Some would say that was a, <laughs> a drastic. In uh, there's a really funny scale of uh, life stresses that we learn in public health, right? And the top there's death, mm-hmm. and I think third is moving. Not moving countries, not on there. Just moving house. So if we're talking about life stresses at twenty five. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it was a crisis. I would say it was probably, it was actually a beautiful year. It was transformative, but in the best ways possible. Like it wasn't from a place of fear. It was from, more from a place of uh, there's nothing to lose. Let's just jump, take adventure. And that's why I'm sat here today. So 25 for me, it was also the year I've mentioned uh, a few times uh, where I feel like I clicked and I became like an actual man. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was like finishing formal education and now looking at the wide world. But 25 for me was it was so transformative. Like my perspective changed, the self-development that I was reading started to manifest. Even my parents were saying, you're acting different, you're walking different. My style changed. I had like a massive, you know, the, the big hair. I cut that down. Actually, 25th birthday, my sister will laugh when she sees this. Um, <laughs> I was like, guys, I'm thinking about trimming my hair, right? You know, when you're young, you have the big thing. I was like, I want to trim my hair. And she's like, do you know what you should do so it grows better? Just shave it all off. You'll look really good. Like you look really good. So I'm like, say less. I go, I shave, I come back out. Everyone starts laughing. I'm like, guys, you said it would it would look good. So 25th birthday, shaved off my head. As, Are you kidding? Nah, there's a picture somewhere. How, how bad will, was it? Uh, I have a very... So the reason I have hair is because if I shave my head, I lose about six years of age. <laughs> so when I was 25, I looked like 18. Oh like, my yeah, God. it was uh, a poor decision. I recommend um, maybe using these apps before you do shave your head mm. to know how it's going to look. Um, but to answer the question, 25 was uh, was just transformative. So I didn't go for a life crisis. I just went for a transformative year. So I can't really tell you what to do in that regard to the question. But um, I'd say embrace it because I think 25 is very transformative for most people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think that's yeah. a question well answered. Um, yeah. from my side, mm-hmm. just to contribute a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think quarter life crises is tend to happen not just when you're 25 but you can mm. go all the way till like you're 28 yeah 29 yeah um it's just that time in your life where you begin to come into your own and to kind of want to develop your own identity because mm. i feel like that's the age when mm. you don't want to conform to mm. what society has been feeding you mm. and sometimes that can lead to kind of a challenge when it comes to mental health because mm. what you find is because you're so you're challenging everything around you you yeah. get anxious mm. or sometimes you even exhibit signs of 
I dare say depression. Mm. But you know, I feel like um when you're going through that time in your life where you want to know who am I, mm. what am I capable of, mm. what are my strengths and my weaknesses, you'll find that those um that life experience where that situation where you're constantly questioning everything it will be heavy in the beginning cuz i think i've gone through some of it but in the end it's just going to make so much sense because you're going to evolve within that stage to step into that next mm. you know season of your life like you did you for yeah. you it was shaving of the head for yes. me it was yes. um certain career choices <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 so so i think that's that's my response mm. i think the you've mentioned the whole like your mind is questioning things it's funny cuz that's normally when you finish formal education and now you've gone from every i think this is why maybe why it comes you've gone from every day being told where to go you and you can see when you're going to finish mm. school you can see what you're going for yeah. when you hit 25 most, most people are finished and you're now making choices as to everything i did then now what am i going to do With in it. the big world yeah. so i think it's natural i don't think i'd panic yeah. if 25 is like a a shaky year because for most people it's okay what, what do i do now yeah. like, and for some people yeah. it doesn't even just happen in uni or yeah. during formal education sometimes yeah. it happens in the course of your life because you suddenly yeah. hit a place where it's like Okay, are you going to tell me that I'm going to stay where I'm going to stay for like 10 years or 5 years or 7 years? Yeah, I'm yeah. going to continue living this life. Mm. I want more. And when you hit that place where you're starting to say things like I want more, I want to pursue more, I want to express mm. myself more, yeah. I want to, you know, spread my wings. Um mm. to use a word that was recently used on me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to spread your you want to yeah. spread your wings. Yeah. And Ooh. yeah, and begin to challenge um Sorry. Kind. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Why a pigeon? Sorry. though? It, it could have been a hawk. Nah, that's it could what have I've been, been a stronger by. bird. My whole life, just pigeons in the morning. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's yeah. a tough life. It could be a. It could be a. It could be a. It could be a. A much more, I think, beautiful experience if you embrace the fact that you are meant for change and you're meant for things that are bigger than you. Mm. And that that instinct that you're feeling is not a negative instinct. It's yeah. more of. It's a nudge towards chasing something better. Mm, mm. Like I feel like anyone who's going through that, because I know there's a lot of guys going through that, and I've had a lot of DMs about mm. this same issue. Mm. And it's like, oh, Oscar, you know, you've done this with your career, you've done this with the podcast. Like, mm. don't you ever feel as if like they're conflicting? And for me, I always say, when you hit a when you take your mind to a certain place, it's an opportunity for you to express that ambition, mm. to express that journey, and to express what you want to see more in the world of. Mm. And so you're just just don't take it negatively be. Yeah, embrace yeah. it. Embrace change. Embrace change. Embrace change. Yeah. Um <laughs> Next question is uh, is a fun one. Um Okay, there's two by the same person. We said she's one of our favorites from our Instagram lives. Uh, you know who you are when I read this question. Uh I'm going to start with this one. Do you ever need to decompress from social media given that this is your job? How feasible is it? You know, that's a good question. It's fantastic. That's a good question. It's fantastic question. I know who it is. Yeah. And you just know that well, from where I'm sitting, I hate you. Yeah. MK. What's <laughs> up? <laughs> um Okay, Eli, you should go first. Ah. <laughs> I can go first. You know. Yeah. <laughs> um Okay, okay, fine. I'll kick it. I'll kick it off because we, we we shared the last question. Um so I think this is something I've actually battled with. Uh one of my good friends has been doing this for much longer than me and she's way more established and i've seen her be very deliberate in the time she takes to just come off maybe for like a weekend or come off for like a few weeks and just let brands let her people know that i'm taking time for myself i personally struggle with it cuz and this is what i was told recently um that i struggle with embracing weakness so i struggle with thinking that social media i can't i can't manage i need a break i i struggle to process that that Eli you need a break. This is what I've been told, right? Um so for me, I've the only way that I've kind of filtered that is I didn't want to make social media make me lose real life experiences. So now I I haven't I don't take extensive breaks, but what I do is even the way I curate it, I'm not on it for a protracted amount of time. So say if I have a long weekend or I go on a trip, you'll find that for the past few months I'll do like a recap on a Monday. So like that whole weekend I'm there, I'm present, I'm not thinking that I need to do post you know so i can still be very present in real world and still keep up with my i'm not going to say kpis still keep, <laughs> and still keep up with my <laughs> my duties um so i've just found a structure where i haven't needed to take a break however as i'm having these conversations about like things that are actually affecting me without me knowing i can see that coming up that maybe you should accept that you can't consistently be on 
with socials, you should take that break. I've only ever come off socials uh, once when I was very unstable. Um, and I think we've talked about this one. I've only come off for, for like two days because I was like, I, don't, I can't even see people right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's mm. the only time. <laughs> don't laugh. <laughs> don't laugh. That's the only time that... <laughs> <laughs> that's the only time I've sort of come off. But apart from that, no, I think I have a healthy relationship with it. But I recommend if you can't manage, then don't try to like come off for a bit. And I think I'm going to probably do that soon. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. How okay. about you, buddy? Um, as for me, um, mm. my social media pages, thank God, I have decided uh, I am not, they're not up for sale. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. They're for me, mm-hmm. for my time, uh-huh. uh, for my basketball, mm-hmm. my sneakers. Mm-hmm. I do what I want with it. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, when I joined social media, I rejoined social media, which was what? August of 2020? 2019? Yeah. yeah, 2020. 2020? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What? Was it 2020 or 2019? 20, I think 2020. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not sure when, um, but like should be two between two to three years yeah, ago. Yeah, I think uh, the 2019 or something. Yeah, yeah, two, yeah th- three or four years ago. Uh-huh. So, when, when, when I came back on, you know, we came with the agenda for, I need to I, like show some of myself um, for Mantok and the brand. Mm. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that you see, that's an objective I can fulfill. Just be a yeah. bit more open mm. and enjoy my time there. And I haven't changed anything about that. I haven't been like, oh, I need to be more deliberate. No, I get these DMs, elaborate DMs are telling me about how I should be running my social media. Mm. Calm down. Mm. Uh, it's please. a happy place. It's, this is, a, you know, um, mm. the business side of Mantok is, is mm. dealt with. What we are now thinking about is like our own well-being because like, Mantok is run off of our relationship and yeah. our interactions with life and how yeah. differentiated they are. Yeah. And sometimes those differences are actually what make the show what it is. You know, 100%. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. like the fact that um, I, I might do more, I might want to do more as a content creator, mm. but I do it according to how I want to and how I feel. Mm. And I don't get, I don't feel forced. And um, I was talking to the coolest woman in the world whose name is Patricia Kihoro mm-hmm. uh, about this issue. And she was telling me that, yo, hey, <laughs> Uh, the reason why I do what I do as well as I do it is one of the reasons is I have the freedom to express myself creatively. Mm. If you feel as if like it's a job, mm. then mm. why the hell are you doing mm. it? Yeah. You know, just yeah. put it aside, you mm. know, and people, and, and for me, I've always been very clear that people don't care as much as you think they do. 100%. Yeah, they yeah. don't. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as recently, <laughs> mm. Mm. people don't care as, as we have recently discovered with certain things. Yeah, 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 um, people, sure. yeah people don't mm. really care as much as you think they do. And you'll sit down, and if you continue to consistently sit down and ask yourself, like, hey, so people's opinions, people's thoughts, people's, you know, that mm. whole chaff mm. of what um, other people's opinions are of you or what you should be doing or mm. um, how many social media posts you should be putting up in a day. Mm. Um, there's no manual. Mm. There's mm. none. Um, yeah. And there's some people have been pretending to have manuals, but yeah yeah, yeah. It's, they're not really result oriented. So just live your life, my guy. And for yeah. me, that's how I decompress from social media. I don't see it as a job mm. i like the warriors just won the, mm. the nba finals i mm. put posts serial posts mm. about them winning <laughs> if you don't like it leave yeah. me alone yeah. yeah do you know what i this might be this might sound like how can you say that about content how can you say that about social media but um i'm gonna be completely honest right the other day uh, i was talking to someone and we we're talking about like how much i do in a week like what mm. do i do and I was like, oh, yeah, so there's Instant Market, there's Mantalk, there's my page, mm. you know, then there's other businesses. And and she was shocked. She was like, how do you manage to, like, run three pages? Like, what the hell? How do you even do that? And as much as, yes, it will take up some of my time, I never put, and this sounds probably mean because I'm in the industry, I don't put content creating at the same level of stress as other jobs. Like, it's, as much as, yes, it's difficult, I've done job jobs. Like, and I've, there was one time where I did a social media post and I made the same amount of money that I'd made in a week for a job. And I thought about how I woke up at five every day. This is when I was like, when I, I worked in a factory once with my father, like back in the day. And I was like, the same money I just made from going somewhere, not even make, just stories. So like, just come take some stories in London and we'll give you like a certain amount of money. Then I looked back and I was like, my, one of my first paychecks, this was a week's worth of money. And the sweat and the f- like physical pain, the waking up, the driving, going there, how I came back tired that day compared to how I came back from that shoot i was like there's no way and i'm sorry i'm a content creator but there's no way i can put content creation at the same level maybe mentally it can be draining but it's it's just not the same as some other jobs there i have much more respect i'm sorry to guys that do building guys that do physical labor guys that do very taxing jobs generally 
And it sounds weird saying that because I'm a content creator. Mm. So when someone goes, oh my God, how do you manage three pages? I've done much worse. But, but I have like, some news for you at the same yeah, time. Yeah. I think content creators also don't realize how good they have it sometimes. Because mm, mm. mm. like, yo, um, there are people who are working jobs. The youth are working yeah. like jobs and not mm. getting paid for two months. And that's yeah. okay. Like that's yeah. normal. Like yeah. they'll wake up every day, mm. go to an office, mm. do work yeah. and don't get paid for two months. Yeah. Right. And yeah. they're doing it every day. Whereas yeah. I agree even for content creation, obviously, as uh, we're new in the space and we're seeing mm. issues like with payment and mm. other things mm. um, and even like there's just a level of seriousness that in Kenya we still don't have in, when, with regard to content yeah yeah um, but that's a con- another conversation mm. but at the same time I think content creators are really like we are we are privileged to be 100%, 100%. able to work with the fans and the audiences that we mm. do yeah and to be able to leverage that so that we can be able to make a living that's yeah. that's something that's a that's privilege such privilege yeah it's a yeah. Pri- so you know like sometimes um i agree with you in mm. that sense but also mm. i don't like the fact that this economy has really taken advantage mm. of of its intelligent and educated youth and they're mm. not getting any reward mm. like i won't lie the mm. youth in this country are really really yeah. Yeah. we are really like we are not in a good place mm, the economy mm. has not been good to us like mm, mm. we've had how many recessions yeah. like since yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah we've had a whole we, every election year is a bad year for for business mm. owners every election year is a bad year for entrepreneurs and yeah. uh, and businesses because they have to let go of people who are mm. they letting go of it's the youth the youth yeah 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 and then like there's no money circulating in the economy it's just going mm. to very specific places for campaigns and other things mm. I, like bro like yeah I'm done. Like yeah. for me, <laughs> I'm done. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Nah, I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. I think a lot of people resonate with that. Um, who took the last one? It's, it's your. Yeah, it's your turn. Okay. Yeah, it's mine. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. um. Just a quick one. Um. How is your English so far? How is right. your Swahili so far? Uh, Ekopo. Ah, fifty. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. Let us continue. Very good answer. <laughs> um, Fellow Kenyans. <laughs> Okay, how are you guys able to maintain such a healthy business relationship as much as being friends? What you have to do mm. is just create incredible experiences outside of work. And mm. that will bond you more than work will. So when you go to work, you'll be more effective. It's a simple answer. But you know what I'm saying. I have no idea how I've survived this long, guys. <laughs> I'm being healthy against my will. The guy to my right is a complete. If he's nonsense, um, if you saw the live we did on Instagram, it's gracious. It's yeah, been tough. <laughs> um, it's been one-sided. I'm suffering here, guys. Um, help me, uh-huh. save me. Yeah. I'm like that guy. Just... In, I'm like that guy. In Get out. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, but me and Mr. Wenda have had some good times. Yeah, I think uh, it's important. I yeah. think, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like, and we're also very conscious of the fact that Mantok.ke is essentially our relationship. Yeah. It's yeah. essentially our relationship. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The yeah. business side and all that, like, um, with the money side, that that you can always figure out, man. Mm. Like, but, like, ooh, in this manner, I found a brother. So, like, this, ah, yeah. So we're, we're doing well. Ah, we're okay. This guy. Uh, <laughs> okay uh, 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 let's stop there before he cries again ha, wow <laughs> listen i'm an open and vulnerable man uh, i can't say the same for some people <laughs> he took it I remember, he took I remember, <laughs> there was a line that your mother said once she said to you she's like um you know, what, did, what did you say she's like you know when friends go on trips sometimes it's a strain how how is your relationship <laughs> Ah, uh, and the answer? Uh, never better. Never better. Never better. Never better. So yeah. create, create experiences. Yeah. Create Join us, bud. Join us, bud. Ah, Lord have we mercy. We can't talk about Lord that. Lord have Ooh, mercy. Lord, not on camera. Ah, uh-uh. when you do it, we have. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. Ah, uh, next okay. question. Um, um, Oscar Kome, mm. what encourages you to do what you do? What do I even do though? It's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. Mm. Um, the the thing about uh, me, and this will also has also is also one of the questions that that have that have been asked is mm. your capitalist mind and your. Mm. Oh, that's my next one. Mm. Yeah, I know. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mm. my capitalist mind and my my philanthropic, philanthropic mind are in a bar fight, mm. and it's true because. In many ways, I don't perceive capitalism the same way as, you know, like traditionally, as it's been traditionally sold. Mm. I think that it's time for a different type of, you know, um, capitalism as a as an economics philosophy in terms of 
as a, as a, as a social economic philosophy because why I do what I do is because I think that building enterprises mm. like this, mm. like what we're doing with Mantalk, mm. um, have the capacity to be positive, to mm. be for profit, mm. and to cause positive change. Mm. Mm. Um, and, you know, as the youth, again, I'm like I said, I'm very, I am in the youth bracket, very strongly in that. Yes. Um, I've seen that there's a lot of opportunities going on in the world that are not really being afforded to us as Kenyans and as Af- as Africans. Mm-hmm. And podcasting is one of those few ones that like we can really like leverage regardless of wherever mm-hmm. you come from because mm-hmm. if you have a voice and a platform as long as you use it for positive change then you know you'll be able to see the world and live in the world that you want to mm-hmm. be in, you know. Mm-hmm. Um and that's what I do why I do what I do because I th- honestly feel like especially with the podcasts um, I actually think that this is one of those rare occasions where as Africans, mm. we have a similar platform mm. Mm. Um, and a similar starting point as most other races across the world. And if we use these platforms and the technologies that are, av- are available to us efficiently and well, then we'll be able to elevate our own lives as well as the lives of others. And, mm. and we're doing it through one of the most powerful mediums, which is culture. Mm. We are now, every day when Eli and I sit down and have a conversation with anyone we're sitting down with, we are printing cultural currency. Yeah. We yeah. are we are communicating to the world that we are a bit more than just those, what traditional media has portrayed Africans as being. And mm. that is such a powerful thing. Thanks. Because as we continue to do it over time, we'll just, you know, um, we'll inspire other people to challenge themselves uh, even more than we have mm. and to break boundaries. So for me, it's like we're planting a seed for the next generation of Africans to like just bloom and grow out of. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I do podcasting. Mm. For the legal side, um, mm. to be honest, the legal side of me is now my pure capitalist side. Like mm. that one is, mm. is a monster. <laughs> it's mm. a capitalist monster. Mm. Mm. Because I, I, I really, really believe strongly in economic empowerment. Um, and that belief has been validated by the fact that um, suicide rates among men are not just caused by, um, mm. you know, relationships, but economics, the economic empowerment of young men and of the youth mm. is something that has that knock-on effect. Mm. Things like access to credit for young small businesses, mm. things like um, talent development, mm. capacity building, and how to participate mm. in an economy. Those are things, and the competitiveness of business. Those are things that I like. Those are mm. things that I enjoy. I really enjoy, and Ila has seen me in boardrooms. I really enjoy, like, I really enjoy that whole mm. corporate structure and engaging with it in that way, and setting up companies and mm. coming up with transactions and ideas around those transactions, financing those transactions. Because in the end, you'll realize that you might have any idea, but when you're executing it at some stage, that I, that those ideas need financing. They need structure so that they can be sustainable and continuous. Mm. And I feel like that's why I do what I do, because I can see that a lot of young people might have ideas, and I was one of the victims of this, but you don't have the education, you don't have the structure to actually execute on your dream and on your vision. Mm. Mm. And kind of those two marry really well, because um, with what you're doing for podcasting, it's essentially media business. I can I get to flex both, both muscles. Mm. Mm. So, so that's why I do what I do. Nice, 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 nice. Mine is just one sentence. I think everything I do, I found a level of purpose in it, and that's it for me. Just, yeah. And I wake up every morning, I know that whatever I'm putting my mind to has a purpose and has a service. So mm. that's, that's, that's it for me. But that's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 So uh, that's uh, well, two books, one paragraph. I think mm-hmm. that's uh, yeah, sufficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn on the freestyle. <laughs> Um okay, okay. Okay, this is a, this is another one um that I wanna I wanna hear your view. Mm-hmm. Um hmm. do men and boys have an essential role in effective menstrual hygiene programs? This is the same question from the live. Oh um fascinating. Okay. I'll repeat what I said on the live. Um, do men and boys have an essential role in the menstrual hygiene program? So what I said, uh, if you don't watch us on Instagram every Thursday at 9pm. That, that is why yeah. I asked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
every Thursday uh, we go live on Instagram and we tackle dilemmas that people have and questions as well. So this happens every week, by the way. But I'll answer this question that I answered yesterday. So when it comes to men's participation in menstrual hygiene programs, um, a lot of the time, as guys, we seem to look at it as like a their problem or like, mm-hmm. you know, it's over there. I know about it and, you know, I'll have sympathy, but it's not for me to champion. Um, and the, f- n- n- the number one thing I say is that without that um, that part of a lady, without a lady going for menstruation, you're not going to reproduce. You came here because that happens, right? So that's the first, just on a, just a logic level. Like you can't distance yourself from something that created you. That's like baseline, right? Then we go to the the idea of um, where we are now in terms of these programs around the world. When we're talking about taxes, when we're talking about ladies not having access to it, um, the societies that's created such a dire situation for ladies across the board is a society that is run by us men. Now, you might think, okay, it's run by those men over there, those men in the boardrooms, those men in government. But what I always say is, like what Janet said, like what is in your hand, right? So if you're a guy that has access to capital on any scale, you have a certain level of power where you can contribute to these kind of programs. Because like we said, you can't live in a society where two, one person's suffering if you want to be efficient. So number one is look at how much power you have. Look at how much either resource or how much contribution you can do and use what's in your means to contribute. Because at some point, you're going to have a daughter, you're going to have a wife, and you need to coexist with these people in society, right? Then if you're looking at somebody now that's in the government um, offices, the expectation on that guy is much more than somebody with just capital. So in the same breath, he should be using his resource, his power, his influence to be giving as much effort as a guy that can just contribute one pad. So I think if everyone takes this mindset as a man and as a lady, as much as it shouldn't be a gender issue, we have to look at it real- realistically that the issue has come from different genders having different levels of power. So if you have that level of power and you contribute, then I think you can't ask that guy to do any more. But if you go to the extent that you can, I feel like you're contributing to your society. And I don't think we should ever make it a them problem or us problem. We should make it a societal issue and everyone should play their role to the best of their ability. That's what I think. and. I hope that guys on any scale, any level of power, any level of uh, income or influence will listen to that message and actually go and do that. Like Janet said, go and buy a pad, give it to somebody. Go and find out who's trying to contribute and help people in that ostracized from society, like in villages. Go and contribute in that way. You don't have to be a governor. You can be just a guy and you can still contribute. That's mm-hmm. what I think when mm-hmm. it comes to men's participation with menstrual issues. Excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, he has given the two books. Here's my one paragraph. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Balance. Development issues are mm. not gendered issues. Mm. You cannot say that period poverty is a girl's issue. It's mm. a women's issue. It's a mm. social issue. Mm. And that has no gender. So mm. as men, we need to contribute as much as we can with as little as we can as what mm. with what we have. 65% mm. of women and girls mm. are suffering from period poverty. Mantok will be, we will be making some mm. announcements soon. Mm. We don't want to say it, but... Mm. We need to be part of the problem. I mean, mm. part of the solution. Yeah, because we've, yeah, we've been part of the problem. Yeah, because we've been part of the problem. Yeah. So, um, yeah. excellent. I think it's my turn, buddy. Ah, it's uh, your turn. It's my turn. Ah, yeah. Relax. Like, sit back. Let me take this one for you, okay, man. Okay, please, please. Just enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Mm. Um, oh, this is a nice one. Again, we talked about this yesterday. Um, what is your current... Oh, where are you, oh, where are you both currently in <clears> regards <throat> to your relationship and religion in terms of God? <clears throat> 